Hey, hey, Nolan, thanks for your time this morning. Back in June, you spoke about uh, how COVID had affected your family down in Louisiana and Texas. And I was just wondering if you could give us an update uh, how your family's doing now and, and where is your level of concern in general when it comes to protecting yourself from the virus? I appreciate you for asking. Um, you know, my family's been doing a whole lot better now. It's just with like, you know, how I just started just, uh, the, the momentum start picking up with COVID from like March to now. It's been hectic, but they've been doing a whole lot better. And then, you know, of course, COVID is always in the back of my mind because it's so easy to get. And you see how easy it is to get with all the football going on right now. But I think like, you know, like I said, early in June, you know, our doctors and the uh, trainers have been doing a great job of keeping us safe and everything sanitized around the building. So I really was never concerned with, with how Penn State was going to handle this whole situation. It was just more about how the Big Ten was going to handle it. Uh, we'll go to Greg Pickle. Hi, no, I'm glad to hear your family's doing well. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for your time this morning. I'm curious what it was like to put the pads back on yesterday. How did that feel? And then how would you just sum up this offseason for you and the team in general with the starts and stops and starts and stops, and now you're starting back up again? Yeah, so, like, the pads, it, it felt great putting them back on. It was, I was almost like a baby on Christmas yesterday with just putting my pads on due to the fact that, like, I haven't wore pads since the bowl game back in late December last year. So it was just a blessing to put them back on and be able to go out there and compete, you know, with our great defense and – our team's been looking real good. I feel like the chemistry has uh, came a long way from way back in the beginning of September to now. And I think we're making a proper strides, you know, to have a great season. And we'll go to Parth. How's it going, Noah? Appreciate the time this morning. How you doing? Doing well, doing well. No. Um, from the moment you got on campus last year, how much has Journey Brown kind of pushed you to get better? And – you know, his story, him being a three-star guy and then at the end of last season, looking like one of the best running backs in the country, how much is that inspiring to you? Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely inspiring. Just, you know, the same guy in my room is bringing so much national attention to the Penn State program and uh, just to our running back room alone. Yeah, but me and JB, we became real close this offseason. We had worked out together in California during spring break, and we became closer during that time period as well. So it's like we just been pushing each other, you know, trying to pick each other's brains. We just – Strengthen our IQ of the game, but you know, do it like Journey, man. He's been, he's like came a long way from where he was at his freshman year to now. Like I'm so happy for him, and I, I know he can do great things this season. Uh, John Sauber. Hey, no, glad to hear your family's doing well. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, so, how have you seen Sean Clifford's game develop uh, from when you first got on campus until now? Yeah, Sean, Sean has always been a guy that's been a leader. Like, as soon as I came in, I struggled with the playbook early, and he just took me under his wing and helped me learn it. And then, like, from last year to now, like, his stride and just progressing from running the ball, throwing the ball, just, like, helping all the young guys out with learning the playbook. Like, he's a, a leader that you want to get behind because he's never going to have an attitude to ask him a question. He never gets annoyed at anybody. He's trying to get extra work in. So he's just been a great leader for all of us. Uh, we'll go back to Rich Garcella. No, it's 10 months later. Uh, when you look back now, what did the performance in the Cotton Bowl do for you? I know you've never lacked for confidence. What did it do for you, and what do you think it did for the offensive line and the running game in general? Yeah, to be honest with you, I was I was kind of disappointed with my bowl game performance when I went back and watched the film. It was a few runs. I was like, man, I could have made a bigger play on that, but – for my confidence level, it, I never liked that. It was just the fact of making sure I was good to go on my ankle. And um, I think, like, the whole bowl game, it was just everybody seen what Journey can do. Like, he just burst on the scene and created a name for himself and for our team. It just, again, it put us a lot of momentum going into this season because so many people have high expectations for us now. So I think just, like, from now to from, uh, then until now, like, it's just been a big step for our whole team. Uh, David Eckert. Hey, Noe, how how you doing? Good, how you doing, man? Doing good, thanks. Hey, I just wanted to ask, uh, with which with uh, Coach Soraka coming in, is there anything different that he's asking of you guys, the running back room, that maybe you know hadn't been the case last season? Is there anything that's changed there? 
Yeah, he wants us to become more receivers this year. He wants us to catch the ball more at the backfield and um, just run routes more and just become more receiver back, which is only a plus for you. It's only help your game. So the running back room, we've been working on that nonstop this whole off season and like really the most practices, all our practices, we've been working on that. So um, yeah, he's been wanting to catch the ball more. He wants to just like you know become more comfortable running routes. You know, just being received out the backfield. Uh, Tyler Donahue. Hey, Noah. Great to see you again. Uh, excited to hear that you guys are getting the shoulder pads on and all that. I um, want to ask you about the uh, two freshmen who came in behind you and Devin. You you and Devin went through that process last year, both coming in as big-time recruits, trying to work your way and compete onto the field. What do you see right now from Kaziah and Kevon? And, and, and from your experience, what do you pass on to those guys for what they can expect in their first college season? Yeah, like Kazai and Kiva, and they've been nothing but committed this whole time. We're just trying to learn the playbook, you know, get to know the guys on the team, just become a better player. And, you know, I feel like my advice to them was, you know, um, my advice to them was just, like, take one day at a time. You know, don't too, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Like I did, I noticed, like, myself coming in, I was just – I had so many things I just wanted to shoot for. I, like, I wasn't really, like – taking every day, having an everyday approach of trying to get better. So my my main message then was just like, you know, take one day at a time and, you know, just focus on what you got to do and do your job at the best and the highest level as possible. Obviously a pretty weird off season, no doubt. Um, but where do you feel like you've kind of managed to grow the most as a player uh, leading in your, leading in your sophomore year? I feel like my IQs came a long way from last year to this year. And I feel like um, just my, my, my body has changed a lot. Um, I've changed the way I've eaten. You know, I'm from Louisiana, so all I know is just, you know, big seafood, heavy foods, all that. But I've changed the way I've eaten a lot, you know, just so I could be fresh on the field and just help uh, sustain my body through the whole season. And I just feel like, you know, I feel leaner and quicker and faster. So I'm just really excited to get the show that gets in there on October 24th. We'll go to Parth. All right, no, I got another uh, Journey Brown question for you. For sure, uh, for sure. From the, like I said, from the time you got on campus, how much has Journey kind of told you about about his story and everything he's been through? I know he lost his grandmother a couple of years back, um, and you know how I guess how amazed are you when you look at a guy like Journey and, and see everything he's overcome to get to where he's at in his personal yeah. life? Yeah, like it's it's never easy losing a loved one. You know, from his story, he's lost multiple loved ones, which is I, I can only imagine what he's been through and all the trials and tribulations he had to go through just to get through that. But, like, Journey's been a dude, you know, he's been there for me when I had family losses as well, right by my side, just making sure I'm good, checking up on me, you know, bringing me food. You know, he understands it. So he's been nothing, you know, much more than a big brother, like, just been helping me out with everything that I need. I got a question about, you know, the team or the school, whatever. Like, he's always there. So, like I said, we became real close this past off season. You know, the relationship's only getting stronger. We'll go to Tyler Donahue. Noah, you got pretty used to, to sharing the ball at IMG Academy. Obviously, Penn State did that last year, and, and looks like they're going to do a lot more of that this year with so many running backs in, in the mix. Um, what do you need to be from a mental standpoint to, to be able to make that work here at Penn State? Uh, the guys you bring in this year, the guys who are already there, what kind of mental um, you know, makeup do you need to, to know that you're not going to maybe be that guy who gets the ball 25 to 30 times a game, week in, week out? Yeah, I, I think that just comes with, you know, uh, maturity. I feel like if you watch the NFL nowadays, I mean, it's a lot of teams using a two-back system, and you can just – you can very much well just eat in the two-back system. You can do your thing and get all the accolades you want to, sharing the ball. And I just think, like – I tell, like, the younger guys, just make a play when your name is called. Like, don't worry about if you're going to get 10 to 15 carries that game or if you're going to get five to six catches. Just worry about making a play. And Coach Chiraga calls your number to make a play. And I think once you start having that approach, one play approach, and just trying to do the best you can, then you're going to notice your reps starting to go up and increase every week. So I just say just take advantage of every opportunity you get on the field and run with it. Mark Wogenrich. No, as a latecomer, forgive me if this was asked already, but how many different places did you train or work out during the shutdown before you came back in June to start actually, you know, with the workouts? Uh, I worked out about, man, 
you like the states I worked out in or just like different places? The states? Yeah, just the states because I know I think you were bouncing around a little bit, weren't you? I, I, I was, uh, like I said, I was in California with Journey. Uh, like that was during spring break. Then I had stayed out in Arizona and worked out out there, you know, just getting my work in. And I had went back to Texas and uh, worked out. Then I had, I went back to Arizona and trained. And then, uh, of course, came back to State College in June. Back to Porth? Yeah, no, if you had to pick or think about one player this season that's going to have a breakout year that maybe, you know, us as media didn't expect to burst onto the scene, who would that be? I feel like y'all are going to be very impressed with uh, Keandre Lambert, our receiver. He, he's been nothing but, you know, great. Like, he's been working hard before practice, after practice. He's on a jug machine, like, always looking to get better. I, I've been really impressed with what he's done on the field, and I think he's going to, you know, make a big impact for us this year. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Um, as a reminder, if you want to ask a question, just raise your hand and we'll get to you. Uh, back to Mark Wogenrich. You know, just following up on that, what I was asking about earlier, what was it like bouncing like that for you in the spring? Did you were able to keep your training level consistent? Um, was you concerned about traveling at all during that time? Yes, sir. I was definitely most concerned about like traveling and everything, but I knew I had to get my work in because I knew at some point, we were going to get back to school, and I had to be ready for workouts and, you know, eventually be ready for a season. So my main focus is just making sure I'm getting the best training as possible that I need to just be prepared for when we get back. And, like, you know, I, I just did everything that the CDC said to do, you know, when flying, you know, have your mask, sanitize your seat, just all the small things to make sure you're safe as possible. So that's what, that was just my main focus, making sure I'm getting the best training that I can get, you know, during that time off from school. We're going to end this too. Hey, Noah, how you doing? Good, how are you? Not too bad. Thanks for doing this. I really, we really appreciate it. Uh, I, I'm sure you've already been asked everything I'm going to ask you. Um, how do you and Journey kind of complement each other, um, you know, from from an alternating series perspective on, on what the defense looks at? Like, you know, um, Journey, he's been a, a guy that y'all seen it as well, that is powerful, he runs fast, um, you know, can do everything, he's complete back. And like I said, he's helped me make strides and just become a more of a comfortable route runner and more of a comfortable, like, running back, catching the ball. And I just feel like, you know, from this offseason until, like, now, y'all going to see it when we play Indiana, like, just the chemistry that we have as a group now. Like, we know when we're tired. We know when one of us is tired. Like, we know when one of us needs a blow. Uh, we can just read each other so well. So I just think the chemistry that we have now is just going to help us be able just to have um, a better impact on the offense this year. We'll go back to David Ecker. Hey, Noah. You had mentioned a little bit about Coach Shiraka asking you to be more active in, in the passing game. What's what's your personal comfort level with that? Is that something that you're confident with, or is that something that's a little bit more challenging for you? Uh, like, I've, I've always, I never had a problem with, like, catching the ball at the backfield. That has always been a thing, but when he's actually become more of a receiver, that's something I've been trying to uh, just learn to get better at this whole season, running routes. Has been my biggest like focus, just getting better at it and just becoming more of a, like a better receiver, creating matchups, you know, outside of the backfield. So, like I like I said, it's only going to help all the running backs. It's only going to be a plus for us when, whenever we try to make that that jump to the next level. So, you know, I, I de I'm definitely glad he's asking us that, asking asking us that right now, just so we're ready, you know, later on in life. We'll go back to William Pegler. Uh, you, you talked about watching the NFL a little bit. Is there is there a guy professionally that you like to model your game after? Or are there multiple guys? Yeah, I watch the three main guys. I watch like every Sunday is probably um, Ezekiel Elliott, Nick Chubb, uh, Josh Jacobs, and I just feel like I watch those guys mostly just because of the fact that I feel like my body frame is going to end up being similar to one of those guys, and just the way they run so powerful and explosive. Like you know, those are guys I'm trying to model my game after. So those three main guys are dudes I pay attention to. Joe? No, I know you had mentioned in the offseason that, that your family had, uh, you know, dealt with COVID uh, personally. I hope, I hope they're all right. Uh, it, we were talking to Lance. Um, he had a family member that dealt with it. How do you think you guys get through the season, you know, kind of avoiding 
that big elephant in the room. And do you think it helps almost to have people that have experienced it, you know, firsthand to say, look, guys, this is, you know, a serious thing that we kind of have to take seriously? Yeah, uh, I feel like, you know, with 2020, I mean, y'all seeing it, you can't predict anything. So at this point, I kind of just take it day by day. You know, just, I, I'm ready to adapt to anything we have to adapt to. Just like, you know, so uh, the COVID situation is, is is real. I know it's a sensitive topic, so I try to just stay off of it. But like I said, the Big Ten, you know, has its testing every day. And, you know, all the I know all the players across the country have to sacrifice something, whether that being more free time hanging out with friends or being with family, anything. You kind of got to just isolate yourself for these next few months to get a season. Like, we all beg for a season. We're going to have to, you know, sacrifice other things to be able to get this in. So I feel like if all the players are willing to sacrifice, you know, their personal pleasure, you know, for these next two, three months, then I feel like we'll be able to get through a successful season, you know, everybody, everybody be able to watch college football again. Lauren, you. Hi, Noah. How you, doing? you talked a little bit about um, how your relationship and working with Journey Brown has helped you on the field. How has that relationship um, maybe helped you with off-field growth? Yes, man. It, it's really helped me, you know, just become a better teammate, honestly, because I, I was a guy that came in at first. I didn't really talk to many people because I didn't really know many guys on the team when I had signed. And, uh, you know, Journey was just always a fun, loving dude, wanting to talk and giggle with everybody. And then, like at first, I told Journey this, like I'm like, bro, I like I thought you was weird, like I did not like you, like. But it's like now we are now like we got a real brother relationship, like close as can be. You know, he just helped me become a better teammate and be able to talk to everybody on the team, become more comfortable, but learning my teammates. Because at first, I just uh, uh, you know I didn't talk much, I stayed to myself, I just minded my business. But you know, he's helped me come a long way with just becoming a better teammate, talking to everybody on the team, you know, just being the best leader I can be.